And that's the first time I say it, but I had the resentment to stay with Coach Jad because okay. I felt like, I felt that what people felt. Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth quarter, powered by LBA. I want to start by saying thank you to Furniture Plus. Uh, it's an amazing gallery located in Ashrafie. And uh, for the first episode, I'm going to introduce our guest, which is Karim Azzadeen, a.k.a. Yeah. K-E-Z. What's up, my guys? What's up, brother? How are you doing? doing? Well, You're good? Been. What about you? So, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, I'm going to start by uh, saying thank you for coming uh, to my Cheers first you, podcast. Yes, sir. Um, and our first together. <laughs> first together, exactly. Um, do you know the app LBA? Definitely, man. Uh, I've been um, approached and um, I'm friends with the guys behind with the it. guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, we met a couple times. We talked about the movement. We talked about what it represents um, to push this movement in Lebanese basketball, in Lebanese culture overall. And I'm really, like, like proud of what they're doing. And... I'm, I'm really excited to see what's... Uh, what exactly, happens. exactly. And for the people that don't know what um, LBA is, it's an application that uh, talks about basketball, uh, especially in Lebanon. Uh, they have a roadmap that they're going to follow, and they're expanding to the MENA region. But for now, they want to start here. And uh, those guys really love uh, Lebanese basketball. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I've, I've met a couple times with them, and especially like Anxi, who's been... Uh, the, the main guy who I've been in contact with uh, before even knowing about the Lebanese basketball app, but um, it's 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 huge, man. Uh, how much power young the young generation and their ideas, yep. especially like people like us, even being here right now, exactly uh, where we started a couple of years ago at Chanville, and where we are now uh, as in our respective careers, but also having the voice, having the voice to push this movement and it's it's uh i i can't explain how like grateful i am for such people and such exactly energy i i uh i follow what you say i think that uh for for the culture for younger people growing up knowing what's happening uh, around them especially in their field uh it's super cool yeah absolutely. yep yep and uh easy so you changed club this year you're for with sure. suggest uh a historical club for sure. um we've seen you grinding this year Definitely. you know i've heard a lot of echoes uh saying that kareem have the hide kareem uh, has everything to be the greatest in lebanon but he's not performing the way he should be i've heard all echoes and i think that this year with the couple games that we started uh, I think you're showing everyone what you're made of, and I'm super proud. That's that's at first. Yeah. Uh, but what is making you play at this stage? To be honest, um, you know me. You know my like what I do. You know how I play, and you know how I live. Like exactly. At the end of the day, I feel like my growth has been uh, constant within my life, I don't think that my life resumes to basketball, even though that's my main activity. Exactly. But I felt like I had a lot of growth to do outside of the game. And you've seen me, you've lived with me for since I was 21 years old. So, and we've been on the same team. So you've also seen how like we both develop By the way, each other. I was about to say, it's crazy. We, we kind of follow the same road. For so sure. you were born in, in Congo. Yeah. Raised in France, yeah. went to the States, right. you then came to Lebanon. Lived there, came to Lebanon. We're yeah. the same age. For sure. And I kind of followed the same path. You were you born in Congo? No, I, 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 was, I was born in Paris, raised yeah, in Lebanon. For sure. Then went to the States and came back the same year uh, as you. Definitely. So it's crazy to see how, uh, how far yeah. we, we came. Definitely. And to, to go back on that question, honestly, I feel like. Playing on, playing how I'm supposed to doesn't mean anything for people that have, haven't have really been able to see me. But what people see is like, okay, Karim has been here. I'm going to speak myself on a third person from of the course, people's perspective. Uh, he's been here for five years since I was 21 years old, basically. 
Um, and we haven't seen much of him, but you have to think about what's happened this past five years and how yep. it impacts a young player who had dreams to play in the highest level. Like, came here 21 years old, signed a three-year contract, revolution happened, Try to come back, COVID happened. COVID happened. Try to come back, got injured, then explosion happened. Like, that's four years out of five. And you were hurt. Yeah, and that's four years out of five years. Like, that's a lot. And anyone else who would have been in my position, as far as, like, this background, just in me and you, yeah. for example, could have easily gave up and, like, do something else. Like, I played in Paris, as you said, as we spoke about it. Like, I played in Paris. I played in Saudi. I played in Bahrain. I could play as a foreigner or somewhere else, but I decide to be here. I decide to be in this uh, in this game in Lebanon because I know how much. Like I know, I feel like you feel when you play in Lebanon, you feel the love from the Lebanese uh, diaspora and all of that. I was about to tell you and suggest Thank the you. fans. Definitely. How, how how did uh, this impact your game? Because I feel like in the past years you said uh, COVID happened. Then we yeah. came back, played with Dynamo, yeah. which is a new team yeah. that we're trying to build a fan base. Yeah. But now you're, you're uh, with a team that has the biggest fan base. Does that even push you even more? The, I, f I feel like that definitely impacts the way you approach the game because at the end of the day, the game is about entertainment. I'm, I feel like I'm a good entertainer, but I exactly. feel like also it gives a value to Um, it, it gives this sense of belonging. It gives a sense, like, I played for Dynamo, and I, we beat all the odds with Dynamo. We exactly. started out of nothing, and we made it to the finals. Um, both, like, it's, that's, that's something that was never expected from us. We beat all the odds, and we did it together. 100%. Uh, today, we're, and we started the same way as we do with Suggest. So I would say, don't believe the hype, you know? Like, I'm playing good... For a few games, maybe I'll play bad two games. It's like, But what people do is that when you play good for two, three games, they call you a king. And then exactly. you play bad for two <laughs> games, and then, oh, what's happening to him? You know? Exactly. And then exactly. they start finding excuses about you. They start doing all of these things. So I feel like I don't get caught up in people's perspectives. I'm just more okay. focused on my own growth and how it's aligned with my vision of myself within Nice. Um, my life, basically. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. And I was about to tell you, um, did Coach Jad uh, help you with the transition? Because he was your coach last year, and now he's your coach again in another team. Yeah. Was this actually? I had resentment you? to stay with Coach Jad. And that's okay. the first time I say it, but I had resentment to stay with Coach Jad because okay. I felt like I felt that what people felt. I kind of let it get to me as far as like. Okay, I've been in Lebanon the past three years. I've been with Coach Jad, and I haven't been really finding my ground. My my, I know I can do much more, and with the national team, being on the World Stage, World Cup stage, which I dreamt since I was a kid, and failing in this. In my opinion, I failed in this because I didn't do what I wanted to do. Okay. But then I was asking myself, what makes me not do what I want to do, like play how I want to play and mm -hmm. feel how I want to feel. And I was starting to ask myself, so I started to have conversations with Coach Chad. Okay. And I tried to I'll tell him, like, what's, like, okay, what's missing? What what are we not doing? Like, I don't want to play like this anymore. If I might as well stop playing. You might as well get another player than me, pay him less, get a better job done. Because at the end of the day, if I'm going to do what I've been doing, I'm not going to feel fulfilled and I'm not going to be aligned with anything okay. in my life. So everything is going to be like this. Okay, But okay. today, I feel like just having this conversation and having this approach and being like, okay, I don't want to go to suggest and look like a failure, you know? I don't want to expose myself to such a, a standard and then expose myself to failure. So I want to, okay, what's, what, how do we get to push... You, he knows me. You know me. So exactly. how do we get to the person that, how do, we, how do we function together? How do we get to there? And, and then we found some answers. And it was more about, you know, like the, we were in kind of a toxic environment the past four years. Every, something, every, there was always something happening. Something happening, happening. yeah. Um, and and um, unfortunately, Dynamo folded because of also these, these dynamics. I don't want to get into details, but 
thankful for Faisal, thankful for Dinamo, thankful for everything. But it was a great journey. It yeah, was a great journey. Sure. I accept. Yeah, yeah, I I totally agree. I think that Dinamo that year we beat all odds, like you said. Uh, no one was expecting us uh, to get to the finals. Uh, Shout out to the guys too, like our teammates, man. I think it was one of my best years. Everyone For was sure. fun, uh, from uh, from Jimmy to the management. I think we were like a, a real family. Definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I I loved every single of it, but today I feel like it's a, it's just another step to my own perspective, uh, my own journey, and there is way more to come, but I don't put any label to what I'm living. I'm just living yeah. it. And I just, my biggest take this year is to live the moment for what it is. Like, don't yeah. think, okay, well, this is where I was. This is where I'm going. Like, this is, just live the moment. Like, be aligned. Like, today I have wake up. How do I feel? How yeah. do I, yeah. like, how do I feel grabbing the ball? How do I feel breathing? How do I feel, okay. like, that's so nice. Fuck, sorry for the, the <laughs> fuck everything else, you know? Like, yeah. I just want to be present, alive, living what I live, and as beautiful as it is, man. Okay, super nice, super for nice. Sure. And next question is, you said that you had goals for the national team. Can we know what were the goals that you couldn't achieve? I had goals for myself before okay. the national team. Okay. I had goals to play in the world stage as a kid. Like okay. I was calculating in class when I was a kid, uh, what like because every four years there's a World Cup, so I knew that when I was, for example, 14 or 13, 15, that one day in 2023 there will be a World Cup, uh -huh. and that I will be this age, so I would most probably participate. But in my head, I was in France, so I was gonna so, play with France. France. So and I was a top prospect at that time, so I was really living that French national team dream. But I ended up. You know, um, it's crazy how life just redirects you. But I ended up here in Lebanon, and uh, and, and there was n I w like the message behind it. it w that's what we talk about as a movement for for Lebanese basketball app to be in this in this journey uh, for you, for 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 all the young people who who know what is happening in the region as far as. The culture, the the fresh ideas, how smart the growth, the growth but the, the the creative people that fight through adversity, like we almost we maybe going through a war, like and yeah. everybody yeah. look what we're doing. Everyone you know, is like, scared on a daily basis. Yeah, on a daily basis, but at the end of the day, we push past those obstacles because, and and it helps us actually live the moment. Because we don't take things for granted for, okay, what's next year? Exactly. What's, what's in exactly. two years? It helps us live that moment and be like, okay, maybe next year I won't have. So let me think about the next two months. Okay. What am I going to do? Okay. okay. And that helped me too. When I f came to suggest and I signed, I was like, okay, I'm not going to think about the next two months. In a week, we might have Nasr. Sorry, it's about the yeah. but Nasrallah like going on TV and be like, we're going to war. What am I going to do? Okay. So let me take it the first day I sign, first practice. Okay, practice is done, day is done. Tomorrow, next So practice, day by day. Day by day, day by day. And that helped me be like, okay, I feel good. Why do I feel like that, you know? Okay. I start finding answers in my game. Why do I feel this way? Like, And then I feel like, damn, it's, a, it's a groove, you know? Cool. And now I want to keep this uh, cool. day by day thing. Nice. And and not necessarily think about tomorrow. Like be aware of tomorrow. Be aware of what's going on, but not take, not let it take a hold on yourself. Yeah. And knowing that you grew up in France, yeah. And your dream was to play with the national team of France. And now you play with Team Lebanon. How how can you, uh, how to say this? Uh, how do you feel playing for Team Lebanon? How can you relate to the to the country? Because you've been here five years now. You you almost speak Lebanese. Exactly. Can you tell me something? Yeah, so No, I honestly uh, it's been one hell of a ride, bro. Like what I told I you know. this past five years. But it, it also like we rose to all of this and the people found the message of hope within us. So the people had only one thing. I respect that. The Mayas 
two things: the Mayas and the Lebanese basketball team. True. Yeah. At one point, all eyes uh, were on you. There, there was there was only two things that was working for this country. Yeah. And we felt it. Like I had people from Australia reaching out. That's Lebanese so nice. people from Australia. That's so nice. People from Brazil, Lebanese from Brazil, be like, "You made us proud." I'm like, I'm like. How are you Lebanese? Like yeah. he's talking to me with an Australian accent. The, lo- the other ones speak Portuguese, and this is the powerful thing about the Lebanese diaspora is that you have a huge community that that can be as like connected and put together through a message of hope because they all left at some point True. because of something that happened in this country. True. And now they find themselves in this message of hope and togetherness that sports can bring, music can bring. Unfortunately, we don't have that many international stars in music and entertainment. But the Mayas, you're a big fan of music, by the way. For sure, for sure. Yeah, you know I know this. that. And I know maybe that. something, sometime we might drop some some music. Yeah, the Twin <laughs> Towers, man. We we still have this project then, man. Being DJs. For sure, bro. I like that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And. Yeah, that's so cool, man. Like uh, representing Lebanon, coming from uh, raised in France, born in Congo. It's crazy. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy story, Absolutely. man. But my dad was was there at some point. My dad grew up here. He was he from two years old till sixteen years old. He was here, and he went to school. But there was a war. There was the war too. They had to leave. Like, like it's all a, a lot of trauma has happened in the past generation, and. They, my dad almost has a resentment about coming to Lebanon. He was like, okay, everything, he's super careful. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do yeah, that. I'm like, that. okay, I'm cool. I got it. You know, like, yeah. he he's, has a lot of resentment. But at the same time, he follows every single thing I do here. He's super proud of what I do. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, a lot of pe- some people have a lot of trauma in the past generation that they held, hold on to. I was about to, to say this. Or some people are just like, but I just love this country. What am I going to do? Yeah. You know, so it's something for me, about I Lebanon. discovered it. In a, in, a, in, a, in a time of my life where I needed basketball, I needed basketball, and basketball found me through here. Yeah. And I feel like I was always more than basketball, but in France, for example, you would never be more than basketball. You never have this message of pushing a, a, a hope message or anything because it's through soccer, it's through this. Here, basketball is the number one thing, as we were saying earlier. And that helps you, like, having this platform to talk this voice as we yeah, do yeah. it right now to talk to kids to talk to, to make things happen to even ha- business wise you know and that's that doesn't have any value it does have the most value you know True. that's that has True. it's beyond anything we can ever understand because it's so huge yeah uh i'm gonna change a bit the conversation for sure and I'm, i, w- I want to talk to you about the fight that happened uh, last week well, with ali haider <laughs> <laughs> that was last week already. Uh, I, I I guess so. That yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah. last week. Time uh, flies, man. To be honest, what happened? To be honest, uh, I was, you know, how quick you can get. You start trash talking. I, you know, I've, I've been feeling, um, like I saw like, that. Like I needed to put, <laughs> like to put pressure on people that 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 uh, was comfortable. Like the players are exactly. comfortable, the league, the league I, certain players are comfortable. You know, being like one of the best defenders in the league, I I kind of know what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, so you played against Beirut, exactly. and I feel like both Ali's, Ali Mazhir and Ali Haidar, usually play comfortable. You know, and watching the game from the TV, I, I wasn't in uh, in the arena, but I could see that you were talking a lot to those two players. Sure and applying pressure on them because Definitely. usually they play with their comfort and yeah. they play at a very high level. Yeah, the, both of them are great players and the whole team of Beirut is great players. Great But team. I just told them even before the game, you know, I, during the game and, you know, we had a little uh, get together at our house where even uh, Anxi, you were part of, sure. uh, and Maria as well, um, which is probably going to join us today. I She's going to join us today, yes. So there is a, a huge... There was an interaction between me and Sergio and Ali Mezer, and they were talking about, you know, like how they're going to beat us. and Smack, how gonna, us, they, smack they, you they, guys, they, yes. They, I was like, man, this is, I, I'm a, shout out to Sergio. That's my, one of my best <laughs> friends. Like, That's our guy, like, yes. You're talking about the game while we have a get-together brunch. That's yeah, how yeah, much yeah. real estate I love having. 
<laughs> yeah, so, that's crazy. So uh, during the game, I was also pushing that narrative of like, yeah, like this is like this is what I do, you know, like I'm gonna talk trash, and I push that, I push that narrative, yeah. talking trash, yeah, talking yeah. trash, and then. Um, but people got to know that it's always all love between us. Even yeah. Like we're competitive and all, yeah. but it's always all love. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like I pushed Ali for that reaction. Ali, I, Ali Haidar. Haidar. Yeah. And I know like Ali Haidar is a hothead. Like True. me also. But, True. But I was also shocked that like, he just started, he just looked at me. Boom. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> we all saw that reaction. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like. This is you what were you shot. did to yeah. me. Like, and like, then like, you have his brother. Ali Messi running and yeah. jumping on you. So I tried to push him back. I, didn't, I couldn't punch him. Like I could have easily swung on him, but that's like I couldn't it's punch family. him. It's know? family. It's yeah. family. Uh, we play for the yeah, like, national the head team butt, together. I was no. like, I don't know, family, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the time so it was So I, no I pushed myself and I was, okay, if he came to punch me now, I was ready to punch Ready to fight, yeah. But I didn't want to punch. And, uh, and of course, of course. He was actually... And yeah, with the adrenaline. Uh, and Ali Mazer, man, I still have a. We still need to talk about how, <laughs> how, he, how he ran up on me. Oh, man. you guys uh, still haven't talked? We we a talked on bit. the court a bit, but that was uh, that he, he he had a bit of nerve at that. Ali, I he got some words to say to you, man. Yeah, for sure, man. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Bali got into your head, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, now we went Bali yeah, the yeah. summer after the okay. World Cup in. Uh, okay. And we, you know, the second time we go, like bro, Ali is a brother, like I know that. almost I like know a that. blood brother. Yep, yep. But like he, I, I got into his head, you know, and that's my and real that estate. My, that's my son, you know. Yeah, that's your son, right? <laughs> yeah, no, but cool guys, cool guys. I think that I feel there's a bro code, like you know, there is a code in basketball. You always have to have your teammates back. I think Ali Ali Mezhir was getting Ali Haidar's back for sure. Uh, but it's tough situation sometimes, you know, because it's your brother. He told me, like, if you were on my team, I got your back until the end. I was like, yeah, but you can't. Yeah, like, that's you the You can't code. look at me in my eyes and, like, grab me like that. You like know? that, like, exactly. He, I mean, he had a nerve attack, you know, yeah. I understand. Like, at the end of the day, even I fought with my yeah. blood brother. Like, you know, true, like, true, true. you can always, Family it doesn't, it happens, you know, but we got to talk true. about it. We got to fix that as brothers, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, okay, easy. It was a, a, a nice talk. So, Kaim, I wanted to introduce Maria to the set. Yeah. So, Maria, is, is that you want to join us? Maria, You're more than welcome. Maria. Hello, hello. Hey, Maria, how are you? Hi. Good? Hi, I'm Maria. good. How are you? I was uh, going to say, like, it's crazy that we all three uh, are in this podcast because Maria is a good friend as well. Exactly. And we met her in the, in the national team. I met her with the national team. Same for yeah. me, actually. Yeah, yeah. And what's even crazier, I was just reflecting today on that. Um, you guys were the only two guys that used to stay to the end of the workshops to really be more involved sure. in the, we did, uh, right, the visualization yeah, session yeah. with Eric and everything, and you definitely. used to be very involved in asking questions, and it's just crazy definitely. that you guys sure. are here and giving the yeah. space to have more people talk about absolutely, uh, performance absolutely. And, and mental exactly. performance. Because this is what you do, right? Exactly. Yeah, I was about to say, Maria, can you introduce yourself, tell us what you do uh, For sure. in life? Yeah. Thanks. So I'm a high performance coach. I work with professional athletes, executives and high performers, people who know that they're meant for greatness, but there's right. something that's holding them back. So I help them to right. overcome their subconscious limiting beliefs, have the courage to step into their power and create the system that takes them there on all areas of their life, not just in their career, Amazing. which is something that you were just talking about right now when he asked you about the growth that you're the the performance that you're doing right now with Sages is very obvious, uh, obviously elevated, right, from last year. And you said that because my growth is not just in my career, but it's also across different areas of, of my life. Definitely. So how important is it that when you're working on elevating yourself and your personal development, how important is it to not just focus on your career, but also focus on other areas and how much does that impact your performance? So I feel like, for example, I had some teammates uh, growing up that were extremely talented. First of all, I'm super grateful to talk to you right now before we keep going <laughs> to this. But we have conversations that are super insightful and super helpful about my personal uh, um, journey throughout the game because we, we can talk about, we're going to talk further about um, in my career or in my, uh, all aspects of my life. But throughout the game, you saw like my emotional um, uh, fluctuations and how I went from highs and lows and how that impacted my game. So, but I would say that 
for example, I had some teammates that were super talented, but had only one thing in their lives was basketball. So they had one thing in their lives. They weren't conscious that they were that good. They just was playing basketball unconsciously. And they were unconsciously good. So they didn't have to care much about their life outside of the because all they do all they did was basketball and they didn't, they didn't have anything else to worry about so they were probably so bad in everything in their lives but all they cared about was basketball so they were excellent in basketball but for someone that's wanting to be excellent in in, the, in my life in other aspects of my life and so i have to balance out okay today for example i'm going to spend five hours training but the other five to eight hours, I have to do something else. So how do I manage my relationship, my eating habits, my emotional stuff, that how, all these things that happen in my game? Because I don't want to be good at one thing only. I want to be good at all these things. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that has so much more impact and it's so much harder because you want to be good at many things at the same time. But someone that's wanting to be good at just drawing might be crazy. Like a lot, a lot of the best artists in the world are super mentally unstable, but they're great artists because all they care about is their art. But I feel like for someone, like I'm, I just said, I repeat myself, but for someone that's really caring about doing things the right way in all aspects of my life, I, 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 like, I want to fix these because they all affect each other. Mm -hmm. if that, I love to hear that and I respect the fact that you have this perspective yeah. so much and it doesn't necessarily and you're still one of the best players here now in Lebanon right so just the, just because you're focusing on other areas of your life it doesn't mean that that's gonna um, affect your performance negatively Definitely. right because when you start managing learning how to manage your emotions your confidence is going to be increased and your focus is going to be increased on the ground. Once right. you start to eat better, feel better, sleep better, uh, have better relationships, uh, work on your creativity side or your adventures, or these are ultimately going to be affecting your state and how you feel about yourself and how you feel about yourself and your life and the quality of your life is going to impact your performance as well. So I love the fact that you gave it that holistic approach because it's truly this. And I was just talking about this after the fight, which we will be referring to uh, in a yeah. bit, just, you know, yeah. once and for all. <laughs> yeah. um, I was talking about on my, on my Instagram stories that why do some athletes only reach 25% of their potential? It's because we live in four quadrants of life, the mental, the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual. And if you're only focusing on your physical, then three quarter of who you truly are is not tapped into. Sure. Three quarter of your potential is not tapped into. What Definitely. if you learn how to manage your emotions? What if you learn how to master your mind? What if you learn how to tap into your spiritual power, your truth? Definitely. And what if you're also working on your skills and your physical health? Then how's your performance going to be then? It's, it's right when you align. I feel like it's so much easier to even like focus on the present moment because. It's so easy to say focus on now, focus on the present. But if right now I just went through a big trauma, traumatic, emotional, traumatic experience before I played the game, I probably won't be able to live the moment right now because I am stuck emotionally there. So like learning how to overcome these things and learning how to also like manage your emotion, I would call it emotional time, mm -hmm. like being like letting yourself feel this at the moment before the game and to be done with it and coming to the game with a fresh. So that was one thing that I was doing when the fight happened and I, I was, was starting to- I was gonna to, ask about yeah, this. Like I was- <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there, man. <laughs> okay, I'll let you ask about no, no, it. Then. No, it's okay, go ahead. Okay. But uh, I felt like, I felt myself going out of body by even ex Ex like expressing that much um, energy to, to the other players on my team and on the other team. So once I started with the other team, I caught myself having this super adrenaline. But then the super adrenaline led my leadership to be super dictator, like almost like, do this, why you don't do this, why you don't do this? And then this started affecting me neg negatively 
and then I pushed it back. So it's like almost like a circle, a loop of like you letting your energy get the best of you instead of you getting like managing that. Okay, that's how I'm feeling. Let me come to myself. Okay, this is what I should do now. And having the tools, it's like built not right now, like building the tools to, to like with people like you that are helping um, building these tools, basically, uh, you need any, every athlete, every human being need these tools in their daily That's lives. Say, yeah. And I feel like it's not taught as women, as men uh, in society uh, to like be comfortable in your own skin and to learn that it's okay not to be okay, but it's okay that to seek help to build these tools that can reach to help you reach the stars, you know? A thousand percent. Yeah. And um, speaking of tools, and I'm asking that because I, I know and, and I want to highlight on that even more. So once the fight ended, at some point you isolated yourself, you went and you sat on the benches Definitely. and you were just in your zone within yourself. What were you doing then? So I was... First of all, I, I don't know if I'm meditating right. <laughs> you know, like I don't have a super great tool to meditate, but I, I'm going to get there with, by working with you but, and other people as well. But um, I was just getting back to myself. I think I was practicing mindfulness. And be, I, don't, I think that's like the thing that people confuse about meditation and mindfulness. There is like, it's two different things. But I was practicing, practicing just being mindful of where I was, my own breath, getting back to myself and how I started the game and how I was feeling right now. And to see like this emotional journey I just went on and when I was at peak and when I was at the worst and seeing what led me to these ups and downs. So like I, I was just closing my eyes and I was just being mindful of my own self and how I got there. And, and that, uh, unfortunately, I was kicked out of the game, but I felt like if I got back into the game, I would be back fresh and back with I a whole that. new... This yeah. is what's powerful about that. For sure. And, and that's what's missing, that aspect of mindfulness and to really self-reflect on, on yourself and your own emotions and not to point fingers. He did that to me and he did this to me and play that victim mentality. You took ownership. How did I react? How were my emotions? How did I manage my emotions? How can I calm myself back down and get back into the present moment? Because by doing that, you said it. If I were to get back in the game, I think I would have started very well. Definitely. Right? Definitely. So understanding what you're saying, yeah. that was the right tool to use. A thousand percent. Okay. He went back to his breath. He went back to himself. He processed what just happened and he reflected on his own emotions. And Amazing. by doing that, he put himself back in the zone and back in, this, in the right state Absolutely. for him to really play. Well, if not, he would have went on there, probably not focused, stuck in his head and his thoughts, overwhelmed, feeling pressured, uh, maybe blaming himself and guilt tripping himself. Like, how did I do this? How did I not do sure. that? Et cetera, et cetera. And how much did that also help you not only potentially get back on the court and play well, but go back home and cut that Absolutely. rope off. The game happened Absolutely. and that is done. And then at home, everything's Absolutely. different. Absolutely. And I, and I felt myself like my, my girlfriend was with me and she was asking me, she was with you actually sitting at the game. But, um, <laughs> yeah, my girl. <laughs> so she was like, how you, because she felt super overwhelmed, super stressed. Like she lived, like me being basically held by a bunch of men, <laughs> you know, like, so she was like, and I was like, she was like, how do you feel? Like, and I was like, I'm great. I just, <laughs> you know, I, I just won a game and I just like, I'm, I'm feeling great. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? She was like, <laughs> she was like, oh my God, like, like, I'm like, I need a second. I need a minute. I need to like, medit I need to do something, you know? And I was like, well, like, I think it's just because I got back to myself on that, on the bench. And like, I really like. You pointing it out right now made me remind remember of it, but um, that helped me like go home and just like I was ready to party. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> I was just ready to party. Exactly, and this is a pro this is a very common problem among athletes. Um, they take the game home, for sure, and that uh, impacts their performance. That, uh, that sorry, that impacts their relationships. That impacts um, how their family members feel as well, and sure. that is going to be impacting how then they're going to be playing Absolutely. further on. But it's, I feel like it's so much easier to like take not take 
back in a situation that I wasn't because I still won. I still feel like I have played good, but I, I had some personal things to work through, but it's, I'm not judging myself for it. I'm just mm -hmm. accepting what I did and moving on, you know? But if you have a, a, like a bad experience, it's so much harder. You have, yeah. to, you have to seek help to get those tools because nobody has taught you or very like maybe a percentage of the, the world have taught uh, have these tools within themselves naturally mm -hmm. like you have to build these tools to know how to get over the traumatic experience and i learned it the hard way i i, I could probably could have been so much further in my in my life if i had the right guidance early on in college and in high school and where i was at and because i was getting to myself i changed teams every year basically in high school and college and till lebanon because i had some feelings against what i was living within the team within the team that i wasn't comfortable with and i felt like the only solution was to seek somewhere else mm. instead of fixing the problem and that's what I'm learning this, the, like even I, with my girlfriend, I was uh, my my exes. I had the same issues. Once you start seeing a problem, you just seek for somewhere else. And but like having these, in this moment of my life, like having this thing of like, okay, I can look the problem for what it is with my team, with my relationship, with my family. It helped me in all aspects of my life. And these are tools that are not taught that you have to like learn or by yeah. people like you, to be honest. A thousand percent. Super and cool. to speak my language in that situation, uh, moving a little bit away from basketball, when, something, when we go through a tough situation, it's put in our life to help us l take the lesson that we need in order for us to expand and to get on the path that we're supposed to take. If you don't do that, if you don't reflect on that problem that we're facing and the emotions that we're facing, we're, it's, we're not going to take the lesson that we need to move forward. So it's going to be coming back. Definitely. Right? Some similar situations are, are going to keep happening until we get to the point where we stop, we reflect on our emotions, we reflect on ourselves, we take that lesson and we actually Absolutely. apply it. That's when we're, we're ready and we're able to move forward. Be but if not, then it's just going to keep on happening until we sure. wake up and do something about for it. Sure. But yeah. you know, by the way, I was about to say, I've been with Kareem for two years, I think. Yeah. Chanville, our first year, and then yeah. Dinamo last yeah. year. And I think that... I don't know if he practiced already those tools, but he he has it in him, Ooh, you know? Big time. Like, uh, <laughs> like, what do you mean? I had it in him? You, you had it in you, man. Like, yeah. in Dubai last year. Uh, so for me, it's like basketball, basketball, basketball. And I would see Kareem, like, going to the beach and then coming <laughs> back to practice. And I'm like, bro, how can you dissociate those stuff, you yeah. know? And but that's, but that's what actually... The past, like people that you asked me the first question that we got into basket, like people are seeing that you haven't been performing because I gave time to myself to learn myself outside of basketball. Okay. I've, before coming to Lebanon, I was basketball. All, I was waking up at 4.30 in a.m. in high school and practicing before school, then practicing after That's school the and practice yeah. after. Like, all my life was basketball, but now what? Like, now I'm a professional. I need to fix my things. I'm ready for people to see me as a failure, but I'm not failing. I know I'm not failing. I know I'm creating my, what, what I want to yeah. do. Like, yeah. doesn't matter if you like it or not. This is what I'm going to do. Exactly. And I took some finance, financial cuts and, and sacrifices because of what I did. But I feel like I outlearned my own, like, uh, the odds that were in front of me. I outdo nice. the odds that was yep. in front of me, and I and I learned outside myself outside of basketball, and that but, helped me in basketball. Because I remember with that Khalil, <laughs> it was tough for us to go to the beach and then to go to practice. Then, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh. it's okay. Anyways, uh, guys, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, it for was sure, our yeah. first episode. Thank you, Maria. My Hanzad. pleasure. My pleasure. It's been uh, a great episode, to be honest. I like you know I like to talk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you for Furniture Plus, Kamena. Uh, for this great set and thank you for lba for producing this podcast as well and giving us the the chance to talk about things that matter in basketball and exactly. athletics thank Absolutely. you guys i appreciate you. you guys uh 
all the team behind us, then I appreciate you for having me. Thank you. Uh, Maria has been great also, and we're probably going to have lunch tomorrow. You know, it's just <laughs> another conversation, <laughs> to be honest. Thank you, guys, and wait for the upcoming episode. See you. Peace.